Hi everybody, welcome today. My name's Brandon. We'll be getting started in the webinar in a minute or so, just getting everything set up, but yeah, everybody, thanks for coming out. If you just give me one minute, let me just make sure I get everything set up. I can share my screen, hopefully, so everyone can see it. Okay, thanks for bearing with me for a few minutes. This is the first, or like the fifth or sixth webinar, so just want to make sure. Hopefully, I can record it this time. I'm not sure. It looks like it's recording. Last time it didn't record, but I want to make sure that everyone can get a copy of it. So let me see. Hopefully, you can see my screen. If not, let me know in the chat. But Today, so my name is Brandon, and I'm going over digital or been doing these webinars the past couple of weeks about SEO and been talking about different topics related, related to SEO. And each week, I've been trying to do something a little different. Today, I want to talk about link building. The last couple of weeks, I've been talking about on page SEO. And I mean, I'll talk, talk about what the differences are, but today, primarily, I want to talk about just link building. I'll go backlinks, good quality backlinks, make sure you don't get penalized or in trouble by Google, and just showing you what works right now in 2020. And, and everything is dynamic, so who knows how long this will work, but for the most part, I'll try to open up relevant topics. And if you do have questions, you could open up the chat and let me know with link building. There's a lot of different strategies, a lot of different ways to do it, so. Definitely open to hearing anyone's thoughts or different strategies that you want me to cover. If you have any questions regarding specific links you've been building, or if you have a company that you've hired to do SEO and you want to make sure that they're actually building the right backlinks, you could let me know after this class. I'm happy to look over that because, as you'll see, link building is a very important part of SEO, and I'll get into all that. But first, everyone's here probably to learn about digital marketing and really to get more traffic to the website, which link building is a very important part of aspect of SEO and getting that traffic to your website, getting other people to talk about you. And I'll explain everything what backlinks are in a second for those that don't know. But my name is Brandon Leibowitz. I've been involved in digital marketing since about 2007. First got involved at this one company or got my degree in business marketing and in 2007, 2008, the recession hit, so it's kind of tough to find a job, but this one company near my house it was an e-commerce website, said, we want to hire you to do digital marketing, and I don't have much experience, and they said, don't worry, we're going to take you to classes and seminars and workshops kind of like this, because really there's not much out there. Even what's put out there, you never know how accurate it could be, because stuff that's put out there a few years ago potentially can be outdated with SEO or digital marketing, which... I'll explain what works today, how to try to find out what works and just be on top of it. But yeah, ever since then, I've really been focused on SEO. I mean, I helped out this one company doing like social media, email marketing, doing ads, doing kind of everything, writing product descriptions, doing a lot of stuff. But SEO, I just realized it's free traffic and if you don't have to pay for it, it's a lot better. I mean, you might have to do some initial time on your own or maybe hire someone to help out with SEO, but it's a lot cheaper than running ads because ads, cost a lot of money and once you stop running ads you just disappear whereas with seo for the most part you're going to keep those rankings and yeah that really is what i focus on is just search engine optimization can help out with other aspects but really just want to get you that free traffic from other websites and right now i have my own company it's called seo optimizer so if you do have a website you want some analysis i'm happy to check that out but yeah, in between that, I've worked at different mom and pop shops, Fortune 100 companies, and everything in between, kind of helping out with SEO. So if you do have any specific questions, I'm happy to try to answer them as much as possible. And so, yeah, today I want to talk about off-page SEO, link building primarily. So SEO is really broken into on-page SEO and off-page SEO. On-page SEO is anything that's done to your website. So going into your website, if it's on WordPress or Shopify or Wix or Squarespace or whatever platform you're on, on-page SEO would be you going in there and making changes to the coding where Google looks. So 
that would really be on page. Anything that touches your website, blogging, if you're adding new pages, new products, new services on your website, that's all on page. You do on page, once you're done with it, you're done. It's off page SEO. That's the part that doesn't really end, which is primarily link building, getting other websites to talk about you. Primarily. So if you got an article published, let's say on the latimes.com. The latimes.com is not your website, so it's not affecting how you're coding or anything like that looks. So that would be off page SEO. Or social media would be off page SEO, like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all that stuff is off page SEO. There's a lot with off page SEO, but the main thing that for Google that they're looking for is backlinks when it comes to off page SEO. So I'll do other classes that talk about social media and things like that. I think I might be doing one in a couple of days, so I'll throw that in the chat later where if you want to come check those ones out. But for now, I just want to primarily talk about building backlinks, how to build backlinks, what are backlinks. And the reason why this is important is these backlinks build trust to Google. So Google sees other websites that are talking about you or linking to you. That's going to instill some trust and let Google realize that you are maybe who you say you are. So the more third-party sites that have clickable links that point to your website, those are back. So what you want to do is somehow figure out how you get other websites to talk about you. But Google sees other websites talking about you, and that builds trust because Google does not trust you. Unfortunately, you really have to build up a lot of trust with Google. When they look at your website, they know that it's not, I mean, there's, it's hard to build a website, but nowadays with all these different platforms like WordPress and Squarespace, for the most part, anyone could build a website and say they're a doctor or a lawyer or put all these keywords on their website and Google's like, mm, we trust you a little bit, but we're not really sure. We want other people to talk about you. So having other websites talk about you instill some trust in Google. The more third-party sites that talk about you, the higher up you're in a rank. And I see a tether was thrown in the chat. It's a weird noise. My computer has been acting up the last couple of days. I think the hard drive is fading away, so there is some background noise. It seems like if I restart the computer, that's when it usually starts. Hopefully it stops and goes away. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too annoying. But next week I will have this fixed. I'm sorry about that. Didn't have time the past couple of days, but with the backlinks. I would say backlinks are like votes to your website. The more votes or the more websites that link to you, the higher you're up you're gonna rank. So backlinks, I'll explain how to build them and all that stuff in a second. But so yeah, so these would be the main things I wanna talk about. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to talk about all these. And again, I am gonna do these webinars every single Wednesday, so. But for now, I wanna talk about what are backlinks, how to build them, or yeah, what are the backlinks primarily different tools because tools will make everything so much easier using these different third-party tools. You might have to pay for, you have to pay for some of them. Some of them will give you free trials, but you do need some tools to really do a lot of this stuff. I mean, you don't need it, but it'll make things a lot easier. Then I'll talk about different ways to build backlinks, look at competitors' backlinks, some quality standards with the backlinks, just because if you build the wrong types of backlinks, they can actually hurt your rankings more than they can help you which kind of ties into the last one, ethical practices, just making sure you are building the right type of backlinks. You're not building ones that could actually hurt your rankings. And this is an example of a website. I'm gonna, I think it might be easier if I just show you a real life example, but if you're on a website, for those that don't know who, what a backlink is, it's, let's imagine this is like the latimes.com and this is, a, we're reading this website and in there you see that blue clickable link and it says Ivar Seafood Chain. If you click on that, we click up a link and it takes you to ivarseafoodchain.com. Ivar's Seafood Chain would be getting a backlink from this website, whatever it may be. The more websites that link out to you, the higher you're up in a rank. Let me just show you a real life example that way, because it is important to make sure you build or understand what a backlink is. So here is a website. If you're going through it and you're just reading this website and then you get in down here, you see these clickable links. I mean, they don't always have to be blue, but you can see here's a clickable link. If I click on it, it's going to take me from this website, which is, if you look at the top, bosmol.com. Now it takes you to ecommerceguide.com, the URL. So you can see the URL change. So this website was getting a backlink from this other website. You want to get other websites to give you backlinks, which is 
little tricky sometimes. There are a lot of ways to do it. The best way is competitor analysis, which I'll talk about in a minute, just looking at your competitor's backlinks because with SEO, everything is transparent. I can see what you're doing. You can see what I'm doing. I can see all of your keywords. I can see everything you change on your website by looking at the coding. And then I can also see all of your backlinks. So it really is just figuring out what your competitors have done and trying to build more backlinks in them. And one by one, you can copy their back or try to acquire the same sites because if it's working for them, it's more than likely going to work for you. There are a lot of ways to build backlinks on your own, but first strategy, I always say, just look at the competitors because they've done all this work for you. But link building is really, again, creating links that point to your website. So the more inbound links, it's called. Putting links, like a lot of people will write blog, ask me, can I write a blog post and then link to other websites? That helps out those other websites. It doesn't help your website out. So you need to get other websites to link to you. You linking out to other websites is really just helping those websites rank higher, which is nice. They might reciprocate the favor, but it's not helping you out specifically. So you need to get other websites to link out to you. And there are tons of different ways to link out or build backlinks. Some have better or help out more than others. There are a lot of quality standards that go into these backlinks, but these are, again, like ropes. It does take time, unfortunately. It's not like you can just build 100 backlinks immediately. It's all about slow, natural growth, just to look as natural as possible. And here would be like an example, not the best quality image, but you can see here's other websites and they have clickable links that point to your website. That would be the main goal in terms of building or doing SEO or link building. And again, competitor analysis is gonna be the easiest way to do it. So let's look at competitors and see exactly what backlinks they've done because they built all these backlinks and it's nice that there's a lot of tools out there that will show us exactly where they built these backlinks, how they built them. But before you even look at the, use these tools, you want to really step back and think competitors online and offline are very different. A lot of people always ask me here, can you research this competitor? And I'll look and see that they don't rank for any keywords. They have zero backlinks. It's because offline and online, on, offline, they might be direct competitors. Like you might be a restaurant and have, I have other restaurants near you and you're all direct competitors, but that doesn't matter. What matters is for Google or for SEO, who's on that first page of Google? That is your competition. So search in Google and search for your keywords multiple times, like search for all these different variations and then start to make a note. Who's showing up consistently? And that is who you want to target. So I try to look in Google and search over and over again, see who my competition is, list them out, and then kind of prioritize them saying, are they a small? or medium-sized or large company. Am I a small company? Let me go after a small one. If I'm a medium-sized company, let me go for the medium ones. But if you're a small one and you're trying to go after these bigger companies, it's gonna be really tough. You just really need to understand what level you're at and try to go after people who are at that same level as you. But make note of who shows up there consistently. Just because they showed up there once, they might have gotten lucky. That happens occasionally. You wanna make sure they're showing up over and over again. And that really is your competition. Those are the people on Google that we want to see. What are they doing? Because I want to get those same back or link for those same keywords and I want to acquire those backlinks. So again, really just understanding online and offline competition is so very different. You really need to look at who is your competition online, make note of them, and then we're gonna look at these different tools that will show me all of their backlinks, which is pretty nice. And then one by one, we just start going and reaching out to these sites, trying to figure out who is linking out to them, how can I get the same backlink using these different tools. So there are a lot of different tools out there. You have to pay for them. I don't know if there's any free ones. They might do free trials for some of these. So if you work for a company, you should ask them to buy one of these because if you're working at a, like an agency or, but if you are just a company, a small mom and pop, small business, medium sized business, maybe you don't want to pay for these tools because they are like $80 a month. I do own some of these tools. So if you want to email me later, some of your competitors, I could check them out. But here are some of the different tools. Ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F-S is a really good one. Moz is another good one. Majestic Site Explorer is another good tool. So all these tools are really good. It's not like one is better than the other. I mean, some people might say one is better than another, but really it's, you just want to pick one because I mean, you could use all of them, Like, if you work for a company, that'd be great. You could compare all of them because they're all going to show slightly different results. And there are a lot of other tools out there. These aren't just all of them. There's a lot of other tools out there. SEM Rush is another big one. I'm just trying to list out the more popular ones. But Anne was asking, are these tools available on a month-to-month -month basis? And yeah, 
you could buy this tool for one month and then cancel it. So make note of all, that's why I tell everyone, make note of all your competitors, build a big list of them, and then you can buy the tool for one month, spend that $80, whatever it may be, throw all your competitors in there, you can download all the reports, and then you can cancel it. But if you do work for a company, or like myself, I do SEO full time, so I do need these tools. These tools are probably one of the better things out there that save hours and hours of work. So just pick one. I use the AREFs one, the top one. So when I do show some examples, you'll see me using that. It's not like I have preference over one or another. It's just I'm not going to spend money to buy four different tools when all of them, for the most part, are going to show similar background. So when I do do this compare analysis, I can just go to, the, let me just pull up an example. I can open up this AREFs tool, which again, I own it. So this lets me go in there and I could throw in anybody's URL. I don't know if anyone has a website. And you want to throw it in the chat and throw it in here for you just right now or a competitor that way you can see what backlinks you have or they have but so i see atlier cocoon so if you do want me to check later on i do have access to these tools so i can throw it in later so but here i could just throw in any url i mean i could throw in amazon i could throw facebook i could throw twitter in here it doesn't matter what or who your competition is, how many backlinks they have. You could throw it in these tools and we could see exactly how many backlinks. So and this website doesn't have the most backlinks. I mean, it's okay, but it has one backlink. So if this is my competition, I would just try to outrank them and get one backlink. But let's see, because let's look at your competition. So it looks like we're doing eclectic home decor. So let's just go to Google, search for eclectic home decor. See who shows up on that first page of Google. If I see any ads, don't click on ads. Ads, they're not doing SEO, they're just paying Google. So right now I don't see any ads at the top, but sometimes you might see, they'll say ad, but let's look like L Decor is on the first page of Google or the rank number one. And we can look at Decorate as well. So I'm just gonna pick these two random sites and since they're on the first page of Google, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have a lot of backlinks. That's why I wanted to pick these just because the more backlinks, I'm not sure if you could see my screen. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I did not switch, or I switched browser. So I went to Google and I searched eclectic home decor because that was one of the keywords they were trying to rank for, or from that example. Here's L decor on the first page of Google. So I just want to pick them. I'm not sure who they are. I've never seen this website, but I can just copy this URL and go back to the tool. I can throw them in here because I'm sure they're gonna have a lot of backlinks and this will be kind of interesting the more backlinks the more we can really pull from this data so if I throw L decor I'm not sure it looks like other they might be too big of a company where they have you can see right here it shows backlinks they have 1.96 million backlinks which is a lot of backlinks I guess this is a really big really huge company. I don't know too much about the decor industry, but what really matters is referring domains right here. So backlinks you can see is 1,900,000, whatever the rest is, but referring domains is 2,700 or 27,000 backlinks. So 27,000 backlinks is what, or referring domains is unique websites because websites, like my website could have 100 pages and if I link out to you on every single page on my website, that's essentially 100 backlinks. Some websites have a million pages, and they link out to a website a million times, and you'll see that they have a million backlinks, but it's really just how many unique pages. That's a better indication, because you don't need to worry if a website links, up, links out a million times. But it looks like here, there's probably a couple websites that are linking out hundreds of thousands of times, but it's only one unique website, so that's a better indication of how many referring domains. And you can see this tool, AREFs, this, has a lot of stuff in here. I, mean, I don't want to go over everything because there's too much in here, but they try to guess at like the organic keywords. So they're trying to guess right here what keywords this website ranks for. And they're saying that this tool, this website ranks for 900, 963,000 different keywords. And this is bringing in organic traffic worth $1.4 million if they were running ads. So this tool somehow figures out these organic keywords. If you want to rank for, or if you could not do SEO and you're just like, all right, I don't know how to do that, or SEO is taking too long, or I'm not ranking, I have a lot of competition. How much do I have to pay you, Google? To run ads, 
to get the equivalent amount of traffic will cost $1.4 million a month, which is kind of insane. Again, I see a lot of people throwing in the chat, this is a really big magazine, so that makes more sense why they have so many backlinks, but still, imagine paying for that traffic. I mean, they're doing SEO to get a, to rank for this, but for them to do SEO, they might have a team of people doing SEO, but they're not spending $1.4 million worth of SEO. They might be spending a few thousand dollars. Seems like this is a big company, so they're probably spending like five, ten thousand dollars a month hiring a team of people to do SEO. That's more likely what they're doing. But what this tool, I could just click on this referring domains tab, and I could see all of their backlinks, which is a nice part about this tool. I could see, no, I can even see exactly what page on these websites their backlinks are being found on. So there's a lot of stuff in this tool. I want to sort by this tool has called domain rate rating where they rate the websites and this is the most popular least popular the bigger the website the more value that seo backlink will have if you're getting a backlink let's say from you can see adobe that's a lot better than let's say my blog my website it's good but it's not like adobe or a wikipedia or blogger or reddit or shopify or you can see new york times so i could start seeing all these backlinks pretty big websites the more powerful or the more authoritative the website is the more SEO value that website passes on so I could just click right here and I could see so this is showing me that New York Times is linking out to them 32 times so they must have 32 articles published on the LA Times which is a lot but again you only really need to get one per site I mean the more the better but it's not necessary so here I could see exactly which articles I could see this article why won't mid-century design die the Boswell of Beverly Hills, a historian of homes, Allison Schirmer, Star Wars Hunger. So I can see a lot of content being published. I just pick one at random. And in here, somewhere in this page, is going to be a clickable link that points to, oh, so let me see. It looks like, Let me search. So now I could, so this tool even shows me what the key, what the text is. So I'm gonna search for the text best dressed because this sentence right here has a clickable link that points to L Magazine or L Decorsa. So I'm gonna go here. So I'm gonna go back into Google, onto this page and look for the word best. So best dressed, I can see right here. So in, so again, we're on the New York Times. You can see right here, best dressed, if I click on this, this should take me to ldecor.com forward slash celebrity. So you don't want all your webs, your backlinks to go to your homepage. You want to mix them up. You want your backlinks to go to different pages on your website. You can see this one is going to this URL. So you can see where the backlink is going by looking at the URL. So it's going to ldecor.com forward slash celebrity dash style forward slash celebrity dash dash homes. I mean, it's a long URL, but you can see that you don't want the majority of your backlinks you want to go to your home page but you will also want to spread them out to other pages any page that you want to rank in google essentially you need to build a couple backlinks to that page so any of your services any of your categories of products that you're selling you don't have to do individual products but more of the categories or if you're using shopify the collections what they call it or services like myself i do seo so i have a page on my website i have a different page about link building i have a different page about keyword research, I have a different page about these classes, and then each one of those pages, I build a couple backlinks to those pages because the more backlinks to those pages, the higher up it's going to rank. And I see a couple questions. So Leon was asking, are the referring domains do follow or no follow? So I don't want to confuse people too much, but there are a lot of restrictions with backlinks, or not restrictions, but um, different different things that Google's put in place over the couple years. So let me go back to the overview of the backlinks. And so backlinks, again, are such an important part of SEO. These are like boats to your website. In the past, a lot of people were just building backlinks to build backlinks. They were spamming websites. They were just joining, or they were really commenting on blogs. It was an easy way to build backlinks. And, or people were going on Wikipedia. Like, I can go to Wikipedia and make a change on Wikipedia. And then at the very bottom of Wikipedia, it says, where are these websites? Or where do you find this information? I can put my website in there. So a lot of websites were getting spammed with a lot of low quality content in the past couple of years. So Google made this tag called no follow. So websites can put it on their web, put it on the website saying, don't count these backlinks for SEO. So think about like social media, all social media, it's too easy to get the backlink on there. 
anyone can just go on a social media platform like Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and add the website. So that does not help. So all those are no follow tag. Wikipedia is no follow. I would say half the internet is no follow, but I wouldn't worry about that when you're building that links. Because if you're worried over do follow and no follow, it's just going to complicate things and everyone's going to get confused. And I'm sure a lot of questions are going to come in right now. But with the do follow, no follow, I just try to really build good quality backlinks. And if someone tells me I have to pay for a backlink, then I'm going to look to see if it's do follow or no follow. Because if you're paying for a backlink and it's no follow, that's essentially telling people don't look at this backlink, don't count this website for SEO purposes. So in this tool, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see right here, it's showing do follow. So it's saying 90% of the backlinks are do follow. So again, you want to have more backlinks that are do follow than no follow, but it's okay. Again, I can even scroll down here and showing backlinks again, do follow, no follow. So it's breaking it down. The majority of your backlinks, you want to do follow, but it's okay to have no follow backlinks. That's natural for a website to have. But just be aware, the easier it is to get a backlink, like if a website just says, add your backlink here, it's probably not gonna help that much for SEO because Google, again, prioritizes. The bigger the website, the more SEO value. So like a New York Times or an LA Times or Wikipedia, any bigger websites, they're gonna have a lot more SEO value than a smaller one. So let me go back, I see a couple other questions. So, so yeah, having a, so I see having a backlink on a platform like Pinterest, Unfortunately, those are all no-follow backlinks, so those are not going to help out for SEO. How closely do I work with content writers on SEO recommendations? I work really closely, Melissa, with content writers and content creators, and especially when I'm putting content out on other websites. Because a lot of this link building is built writing content and distributing it to other websites, which I'll talk about that in a minute, hopefully, if I have time for it. But the more websites that have clickable links that point to you, the better off you're not going to be. Like the New York Times right now, trying to get a backlink from the New York Times, if I go back to that example, it might be a little tricky because what I would do is I would go here to the top and try to figure out who is the author of this article or when was this written. It was written in 2018, so it's not that old. And then I would try, sometimes if you click on the, the author's name, it will take them, it will be a clickable link that goes to the profile. Looks like this one doesn't, so I'll just search for Catherine Roseman in Google and see if I could find a Twitter account for her. Because for some reason, people respond really well on Twitter. Like if I message someone on, well, here's a New York Times profile, I can click on the New York Times, I can click on Twitter. So I want to find some contact information from her. So I could email her and say, hey, I saw you wrote this article. You mentioned one of my competitors. How can I be included in this website? So here's Catherine Roseman on the New York Times. Doesn't look like there's any contact information here. But Twitter, again, for some reason on Twitter, like if you message somebody on Facebook, I'm not sure if you know this, but Facebook has this inbox called filtered inbox. Most people don't see this filtered inbox. Where if I message some, if I message someone I don't know you, it's gonna go into this filtered inbox and you're probably not gonna see that message. I recommend everyone later today, go log on to Facebook on your computer and you'll see in your message box, there's this area it's called filtered inbox. There's probably a lot of messages that you've got that you've never received because Facebook's not going to notify you about these messages because they're essentially spam. You're messaging someone you don't know who they are. But with Twitter, not sure why, but I reach out to big companies and they get back to you really well. So with Twitter, I can reach out to Katie Rose. It looks like Katie Roseman. It says right here, New York Times reporter, Wall Street Journal alumni. So she probably writes at a few different websites. I could get an article in the New York Times. Wall Street Journal, which probably has a lot of other websites as well, if she's writing for these ones. So again, you want to make sure you are reaching out to the right person, <coughs> not just another Katie Roseman, but it looks like her name's a little bit more unique. It's a really common name. You might not find them on Twitter, but you can see she has 23,000 followers. She has a verified profile. So she is legitimate, credible, and you reach out to her. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty likely that she'll get back to you. So you're reaching out to people on Twitter so if you do need to get a Twitter account, I highly recommend for SEO. Google and Twitter partnered up a few years ago. So Twitter does might potentially have some SEO value. All social media does not help out with SEO, but Twitter and Google partnered up a few years ago. So it could have some SEO value. No one really knows specifically. I don't think it helps out that much, but for building backlinks, this is a great way to build those relationships. So if I use, so at the top, I can see her username. If I take her username and tweet her, so if I go, to the bottom left on Twitter, I could get the little plus sign where it says create a new tweet. 
in here, I could start off the tweet with the app sign and her username, and that's gonna send her a direct message. So by going into Twitter right here and at signing and then putting her name, Katie or, or Katie Roseman, and then I could type a message. Hey, I saw that you wrote this article. I also, or whatever, I mean, this is where you gotta get creative and figure out how are you gonna pitch or to get your website included in this article because your competitor was included in this article. It's more than likely you're gonna be able to get in there as long as it's, you have something relevant. So maybe you give them some information or you read through the article and you might notice it's from 2018 and if you give them a tip about what or how to make it more relevant to 2020 because everything does change, everything is so dynamic nowadays, but you really have to do figure out what angle can you use to pitch them to get them to say yes to publishing that content on their website. Let's see a few other questions. So, and I started a website. I got a few overtures via backlink about trading. So, and it's talking about people reaching out to her on Twitter about trading backlinks. How careful should you be about establishing a relationship with another website? So, I guess this kind of answered that question, but you definitely want to use Twitter because, you know, for some reason, Twitter is a great way to connect with people. As you can see in the chat, and put that in before I even answer that question. It's kind of funny, but that just shows that for Twitter, I use Twitter. All the time to build relationships. I can reach out to people on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, but they don't get back as much as Twitter for some reason. Like LinkedIn, they don't let you send messages. You have to actually sign up for the sales navigator. I forget what it's called, but it's like $60 a month. So LinkedIn, wipe it out. Facebook, that filtered inbox, which I highly recommend everyone check out later today. You'll see there's this other inbox that has quite a lot of messages that you don't know because Facebook does not notify you, but Twitter will notify you. So Anne or every, and everyone else, I would recommend building relationships. Just make sure that if you do start building back links to one another, that's a good quality website that's relevant to your niche. Like you don't want a casino linking out to someone that's doing, again, or like to a doctor, because that's not gonna be really relevant. You want other relevant websites to link out to you. So just be careful when you build the back links. You just wanna make sure they are legitimate websites. They look good, clean, safe. And I see a couple other questions. How or safe to see that key to backlinks is really just having published content. Yep, yep, that is correct, Jay. Yep, the more published content we have on third party sites, that's really the easiest way, not the easiest, the best way, safest way to build backlinks is getting other third party sites to get backlinks to be placed on their website. Which first I try to go look at my competitors, see what they have, and then after I've done that, like after I've gone through that list, time to build my own backlinks because there's only so many backlinks my competitors have. There's a lot of other websites out there that will take articles or take content, you just have to find them, which I'll talk about in a minute. Leon saying, what would I place on backlinks in this SEO process? With SEO, I would say backlinks are probably like 60, 70% of the SEO, maybe 80% of the SEO because, but with SEO, it is like a puzzle. You have to have all the pieces together. You have to put the keywords on your website so Google knows what your website's about. And then you need those backlinks to show Google, okay, other people are linking out to me other websites are talking about me. So you gotta get those other websites to link out to you, which is the biggest part, is you're consistently building backlinks. So if I go back to this tool, AREFs, you'll see it shows backlinks over time. This tool came out in 2013, but you can see this chart. You can see the backlink growth. Like in 2013, they had 6,000 backlinks, a lot of backlinks. I mean, most websites, I, this one's a little bigger, but most websites like that you might be competing with, probably gonna have, maybe I'd say like 100, a couple hundred backlinks. So that is what you should aspire to get. Again, every website's gonna be different, so you might wanna get this tool just to double check, but usually it's about 100 backlinks, give or take, and you wanna build them up slowly and naturally. You can see this website did not just shoot up and get 27,000 backlinks. It's been a process, a steady incline. If all of a sudden you got 100 backlinks on your website, that's gonna look really weird to Google, so I would try to build maybe five to 10 backlinks a month. I mean, five is a good starting point. You don't need to build 10. You could get five a month. That would be a good starting point. You don't have to get five. You only do one a month. You'll still see over time you're going to move up. If you can do five, it's going to be a lot faster than doing one a month. So the quantity of the backlinks, the fault of good quality backlinks, the more you have, the faster you will rank. So just be aware. If you can build ten a month, that's going to be great. The more you can build, the better. Just don't go crazy and build a hundred a month. You want to make your website look like a normal website. A normal website. I mean, maybe you went viral and got published on a bunch of different magazines, but normal websites. It's slow, steady growth. It's really what you're going to be looking for when it comes to these backlinks. So again, one by one, 
go into this referring domains area on AWS or whatever tool you use, it does not matter. Moz, Majestic, or SEM Lash. Again, they're all going to show you different numbers, but they're all going to show you pretty much the same or similar websites. So again, sorting by the most authoritative sites, I'm going to go through these lists or through these and try to figure out which one of these sites can I get backlinks from. Again, a lot of, so at the top, a lot of these sites like Forbes, The Guardian, these are all really big websites, CNN, like it's gonna be tough to get, like Bing is giving them a backlink. Again, this is a really big one, so it might not be the best. Google's even giving them some backlinks. So the BBC is giving them backlinks. So they're getting a lot of the backlinks from a lot of different websites. So these might not be the most viable. So maybe you scroll down and look at page two or three, but you can see like Stanford is giving them a backlink. You might wonder like, how is Stanford a school giving them a backlink? So if you go in there and Again, click on this and you can see exactly where that backlink is being found on. So it looks like on this page, somewhere on this page, is a backlink to the Home Decor magazine. Now it looks like this is an error page. So again, these tools are not 100% accurate. Or another thing that happens, which I want to talk about, it looks like I don't have time right now, but the next one is broken backlinks, where this page used to exist used to give them a backlink. And if this is my competition, I could just try to figure out like, how can I rebuild this page and reach out to one of these websites and fix these broken, it's called broken backlinks. And I want to, it's a longer strategy. I'll have to explain it later on, but you can essentially look at broken pages and try to acquire those backlinks. But that will be for the next one because it looks like it's almost the end of this class, but I'm going to be doing these every week. So I'll throw in the chat the URL if you want to come to my class next week. It is at seooptimizers.com forward slash classes. So don't sign up yet, but if you do want to sign up, sign up in the next, in, wait 10 minutes after this class ends because after this class ends, I'm going to change this page and this page is next week. I want to talk about YouTube videos because a lot of people ask me, how do you rank YouTube videos all the time? And YouTube videos, I mean, YouTube is the second most popular website out there. Google's the most popular. YouTube and kind of Facebook switch off every day between number two and three, but YouTube, it's so very important. And if you, even if you don't have videos, I'll show you how you can make a slideshow image with videos and make that on YouTube because I think that really is important. I really haven't done that before. I usually do just specifically SEO classes, but I'm open to whatever topics people want to talk about or if anyone has any questions about other topics that you want me to go over in the future, but let me throw it in the chat. So you go to seooptimizers.com forward slash classes. This will let you sign up for that class about webinar or about YouTube video marketing next week. And then if you do want me to go over some other topics, definitely let me know. You can throw it in the chat or email me after, later on. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm almost out of time, but I want to just show you. So if you do have a website or if you have your own business and you want, I'm happy to do an SEO analysis. Again, SEO is why I do full time. So or in the chat as well. If you go to seooptimizers.com forward slash free, sign up. I'll give you a website consultation. Check it out from an SEO perspective. Look at your backlinks, look at your keywords. So if you want, I'm happy to do that. And also, if you really want to learn SEO, I am doing a five hour class of doing all these free ones. But if you want a five hour 16th, on the May 16th, on Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. It's five hours, it's 10 people or less, so it's a lot more hands-on. And uh, when I can really show you how to make these changes, you can look at all the competitors backlinks, do the on-page SEO, how about social media in there. So if you are interested and really want to dive into it and want to learn more than the bits that I've been putting out every week, come to that class. If you go to seooptimizers.com forward slash learn, that's how you can get to that class. But I am going to kind of keep trying to do these class, these free ones every Wednesday. So I'll throw it in the chat again. And if you have any specific questions and things like that you want to go over in the future, I want to try to make them as dynamic as possible and as personal because there are so many different things I could do. And Kelly was asking, how much is the class? So the class on Saturday is $99. It's usually $199. But with the quarantine and everything going on, I'm not, I don't have to spend those expenses on renting out the room. Which, Makes things a little easier, a little nicer, so and it makes it easier for people. So if you want to come, you don't have to travel out to Los Angeles and find parking in downtown LA and all that stuff. So if you want to come, it's and in the class, it's going to be again, ten people or less. It's more one on one, kind of really personalized. You ask whatever questions you want. Artist SEO really want to make it more 
hands-on. I mean, I want to make these hands-on, but right now there's about 45, 50 people in the class, so it's kind of tough, but I do, again, want to try to make them as hands-on as possible and as personal, so I want to make sure that everyone gets as much out of these as possible. Definitely come back next week, but if you do want to take that one, the full-day class, it's, you know, I'll throw it in the chat, seooptimizers.com forward slash learn. Or if you want to email me, you can see my email at the bottom of the screen or call me up if you want to have some questions. But again, I do want to bring out as much information, help out as much as possible. There's a lot with SEO and digital marketing. I could probably even talk about ads in the future, even though I don't like spending money on ads, but people want to learn about ads. So, I mean, just let me know other classes because I know I might get sick of SEO after a while if you talk about it, but there is so much that needs to be done. And I want to get you that free traffic because why pay Google or Facebook when you can just do it yourself? I mean, it does take some time and effort, but you're essentially going to be saving a lot of money in that long term, especially like that example where it showed that El Decor, they were advertising and spending money on Google ads and cost them $1.4 million a month to run ads. I'm sure they spent a lot of money doing all that SEO, but yeah, I don't think they spent $1.4 million to do that SEO to get those keyword rankings. So again, it does take some time and effort, but it really does pay off in the long run. For most businesses, that's where you're going to get the most traffic or get the most qualified leads. And so Carol is asking, have I ever done a con class on SEO content, like keywords, content issues, pictures, video impact? So all that would be in that five hour class on Saturday. If you want to check that one out. I do these 40 minute ones, but there's only so much time, so I can't go over everything. I try to cover as much as I can, but with, as you can see, there's a lot I can talk about and have to talk about. And I will try to get back to the rest of these link building strategies probably in two weeks, but for now, I think next week video is so very important because people don't want to read content. People want visual content. And you can create videos, link them on YouTube, and then you can also put those videos as blog posts on your website. People can watch a blog post instead of reading a whole article, or you should put those videos on IGTV or Facebook video. I mean, there's a lot of places you can take these videos, and videos are not slowing down. People want visual content. So I think that one will be a good one for next week. And yeah, if not, or if you have any other questions, you can let me know in the chat. Or if there's any topics you want me to know over in the future, let me know. Other than that, thanks again for coming out. Hope everyone's staying safe and helping to know. And I'll be back next week with more topics. And then on the 16th for that full day, five hour class where it really goes in depth and hits on as much as I can in that, top, in that time. And other than that, thanks everybody for coming out. Appreciate you taking the time out. I'll try to, hopefully, I think this is recording, so I'll email everyone, hopefully copy this presentation. I had some issues in the couple, last couple of times with Zoom, but I think I figured everything out, so I'll send everyone a follow-up. And other than that, thanks everyone for once again coming out, and hope to see you next week or at some other classes.